Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayemi Maseches Soita Daf Ches. We are holding on Zayin Amud Beis at the last line on the bottom. Vim Amra Tahirhi Maalin Oisa L'Shari Mizrach. Back to the Mishnah. Where an Isha disregarded the warning of her husband and went into seclusion with this man, we bring her up to the best in the Sanhedrin in order to serve her the May Soita. Now, first we try to intimidate, we try to discourage her. Look, please admit, instead of having to go through this procedure, but if she insists, him Umra Tairani, she sticks to her guns, I am totally innocent, then we proceed. So we bring her up to the eastern entranceways of the of the Beis Hamidash, of the Azor. Asks the Gemara, Ma'alan Oisa, we have to bring her up? She was already there interacting with the Sanhedrin who are located in that position. Ma'alan Oisa, what do you mean we bring her up? Hasam Kaima, she's already there. That's where the uh, Sanhedrin were located. The Ma'askina la Umachtina, the answer is, we try to shake her up, so we first bring her up there to the Sanhedrin. Then Ma'askina la, we take her back down, out, out of the Harabayas, all the way down. Umachtina la, then we bring her back up. Daily Yaga to wear her out and to intimidate her further so that perhaps this back and forth and this uh, being tossed around would shake up her resolve and indeed she would admit if in fact she is guilty. Like we find elsewhere, we apply this method to the Edom, the Sanya Rabbi Shimon ben Lozor Bezin Masiyan Asa Edom. We have witnesses who are coming to. Say Edus regarding very, uh, very, uh, a, a very critical case. Dine nefashes. We want to ensure their trustworthiness. What do we do? We are masin as edim. We walk and We take them from one place to the other, to and fro. Kadesha to tar of daat and lane, so they get a bit uh, intimidated and shaken up. And if in fact they're making it up. Perhaps this would undo it and would um, discourage them from proceeding. Okay, so we take her to that location, to the Sha'ar Mizrach, which was also called Sha'ar Niknor. That was the entranceway to the Azara. So that actual you know, doorway was not Kodesh Bikdusha's Azara, in which case all types of people can stand there. Shasham Mashkinasa Soites. That's where the Saita would stand when she was given the waters. Who else? The mission speaks about the uh, women who gave birth to bring the, and bring their carbonates. They stand there. The Mitzayra would stand there. Asks the Gemara, what are all these people doing there? Bishlema Saita is, understand why a Saita would be positioned at that place. Because the Torah clearly says, as such, we bring the Isha, we present her Lifnei Hashem, and Rashi says, that's a reference to the Pesach used to enter the Azar. So we put her at the main entranceway. That's where we take care of the Mesoita. Mitzaran Nami, likewise by the Mitzaira. That's where he stands. Tachsiv, Vehemed Akoin Ametair. The Koin takes the, um, the man and puts him. Lefnei Hashem Pesach Oyel Mayud. Okay. Elo my time. But why is a Yoledis positioned over there when she brings the Korbanis? Is it for the following reason? That when a person brings a Korban, he is meant to be present. It's something personal. It represents his sacrifice to Hashem. Now, Although he would like to go into the Azora, but since he's a Mechusar Kapara, he's lacking the Kapara of the Korban, he has to stand outside. That's the perfect place to stand. Far enough, but close enough. The Snan, as we have a Mishnah, that being present is important. Ein Korbono Yishel Odem Koriv, Ela Imkein Oimid Al Gabov. One is meant to stand. One is meant to be present. 
He's meant to witness the bringing of his carbon. So that's why the Yoleda stands there. Is that the case? Is that the reason? Yeah, if that's so, then why only a Yoledis? Zavin. Azava is Nami. What about other people? Azava, Azava, whose tummy needs to bring a carbon. That's a perfect place to stand. Why don't we mention them? And Echnami, you're right. They also belong on the list, but we just mentioned one as an example. Vitana, our Tana, Chada, Minayu Naka, just mentioned one of the Mechusr Kapara. Mentioned the Yoledis, but really, it's just one item on this whole long list of possibilities. We have the Zav, the Zava, all those individuals would also be standing right there when, in fact, they bring their Karbonus Tanarabonon. In Mashkin Shtei Soites Ka'achas. We never attend to two Soites at once. So you don't get them to drink the water standing together. Kidei Shelo Yehei Libo. Gas We don't want uh, the, the accompanying Isha the one standing next to her to give her that psychological boost, that boost of confidence, which would make it very difficult for her to be genuine and to perhaps admit of any wrongdoing. Look, she sees her friend standing then stubbornly sticking to her denial. So even if she is, uh, this one is ready to admit, but she can't bring herself to do it. So better do it on an individual basis, each one separate. Rabbi Daimir Loimin has shame who said, this is not the main reason why we don't pair them up. Ella, it's a pasuk, Amakra. It says, Vehishka, Vehishbiya, Oysa Hakoyen. What's Oysa? Oysa Levada. Each woman on her own. Tanakam Aksib Oysa. Question. Why does the Tanakam have to give that reason, that psychological reason? It's a Pasuk, each Isha separately. The answer is, you're right. Tanakama, you know who this Tanakama is? The Tanakama who adds reason to the Pasuk. Rabbi Shimini, this is the well-known Rabbi Shimon, the Darash Tama, the Kroho, seeks to elaborate on the reason behind the Pasuk. Uma Tam Kamar. Tanakama, of course, knows about this Pasuk. But it's Rabbi Shimon who elaborates. What is, in fact, the reason behind it? Can we find a re- rationale, something to explain? And the reason is, We want her to be genuine, not to be uh, you know, boosted by her friend, and perhaps this would facilitate a genuine approach and perhaps bring about her admission. Now, both uh, Rabbi Yehuda, who simply sources the, the Pasuk, and Rabbi Shimon, who is based on the Pasuk, but has another explanation, both are basically saying the same thing. Each Isha is separate. Might be now any nafkamina, any difference between whether you add the reason or not? Ikimna, the difference would be in a situation where the reason doesn't apply. Roisasas. Some of our Roisas says, the women are sort of quivering at a fear. So you see their confidence has been pretty diminished. There's no issue of, you know, pride and confidence. In this case, there's no concern. If, if the reason is because of the confidence issue. So you can give them both to drink at the same time. But according to Yehuda, it's a Pasuk. Each one separately. Irrespective of the you know, emotional state of the Isha. Asks the Gemara, but even when they're quivering and they're clearly intimidated, why would Reb Shimon allow them to be served at once? We never try uh, to bundle mitzvahs up, Rashi says. It looks like you're just trying to unload that load, trying to get rid of the mitzvahs quickly. Each one deserves its own special you know, attention. We're not meant to. Do two soites at once. We don't uh, go through the taharas uh, mitzora two at once. We don't bore the air of two slaves at once. When you find somebody killed, killer unknown, you bring the egla arufa. You don't do two cases at once. Why? We never tie together and bundle mitzvahs bulk. And wholesale. 
So in any case, we don't do it. And you're telling me that if uh, we see that she's uh, quivering, there's no concern of of libel gospel, we do two at once? What about mitzvah is chavilas chavilas? Um, Rabbi, we tell me Rav Kahana. Says Rabbi, and some say it was Rav Kahana. Like Kasha, the answer is, depends who's doing it. Depends how many people are involved. Kan b'kayin hechad. You're right. One kayin shouldn't be doing two at once. It looks like he's just trying to get it over with. But kan b'shnei kahana, if you have two kayin, each one taking care of an isha separate, that's, that would be okay, if not for the fact. That we have the, the Pasuk, according to Rabbi Yudah, or you're concerned about Libo Gaspa, which would not apply when it's racist. So, the bottom line is, Bryce says, Eid Mashkin Shtesh Saitas Ka'achas. Why? According to Rabbi Yudah, because there is a cost of Oisa, each one separate. According to Rabbi Shimon, sure, there's a Pasuk, but it's only when there's a concern of Libo Gaspa, Bechaverta, of. Uh, of the um, you know the emotional boost that she gets from seeing her friend um, denying her her story, but if it's a case where apparently she is fully fearful of the situation, there's no issue of libo gaspa. You can go ahead and do two together, provided it doesn't look like you're trying to get over with. Provided you have one kind tending to each each uh, to each saita separately. So Misha continues, The coin grabs her begodim and it can tear and her uh, goof can be exposed a bit. Perhaps you only uncover her hair. What about part of the goof? The Pasuk adds the word her isha. We know we're speaking about an isha. Why do we have to add her isha to tell you that even part of the goof is exposed in the process. Why does the Pasuk have to specify the hair? Because aside from exposing it and uncovering the hair, he also disrupts the hair arrangement, which makes it look more disheveled. So the Mishnah holds that we do that to the hair, and we also amigala some of the goof. Rabbi Yudha disagrees. He says, if her lave was not uh, attractive, you would be careful and not expose it. Why? We're concerned about the Yitzhahara affecting the people around her. But the, the Chachamim apparently are, are not concerned with that. Do you mean to say that Rabbi Yudah is concerned about Hirur Avera and generating uh, inappropriate thoughts amongst the uh, crowd, and therefore we we seek to minimize her exposure. The Rabbanon are apparently not concerned about that factor. Look, they say, you be Megala, some of the goof. We're not concerned about Hirur Yetzer Hara. But if Chashamin and we find that in, uh, in a different uh, case, in a different halacha, actually their, their opinions seem to be reversed. This time we have a Brisa regarding the uh, Skila process applied by Bezdin. So when a person is uh, you know, liable to the uh, Misa of Skila, uh, they address him, and the Brisa says there's a difference in the way we treat the, uh, the man and the woman. By a man, we take a perik echad, a piece of cloth, and we cover him in the gender area in the front. By the Isha, the front and back, because the uh, erva is visible on all sides. Nisha kula erva. Div Rabbi Yehuda. Chacham Amir. Ha'ish niskal orayim. Ve'in ha'ish niskal saruma. Chachamim say, only a man uh, has the uh, skila arum. He's undressed when we do the skila, but the isha is kept dressed. Apparently, we're not concerned. We are concerned about hearer. We keep her covered. What does Rabbi Yehuda says? No. The same process applied to the ish. It's pretty much the process applied to the Isha. We're not concerned about Hiru Ravera, which seems to contradict his concern by Saita. Amar The answer is like this. Hacha time am I. The reason why by Saita, Rabbi Yudah is really concerned, Shema Tetzim and Bezin Zakkois, because we don't know what's going to happen. Perhaps he'll walk away from the May Saita, squeaky clean. Alive and well. And the young Kahanam who witnessed the scene, and we're confronted with the 
exposure will now have the Yitzhahara to instigate her. So here we're concerned. Hasam HaMestalt, what over there in the year? Skila, there's a gear say, Mitka, tell us, she's going to kill us, she's not going to be around for there to be any concern. So therefore exposure is not a concern. V'chitema perhaps will say, Asul is Gari Bachranaisa. Perhaps a person witnessing this exposure will now be inclined to be drawn to other other uh, Averis. Ha'amarav, Rav says there's no concern. Gemiri, I have a Kabbalah for my Rabbeim. The Ein Yetzir Hara Shodat, Yetzir only has an effect on a person if it's the thing that he saw. El of Amasha in Averis, only this situation instigates him. But witnessing one scene will not affect him regarding a different situation. So therefore, since the Isha here is not going to be around to present a challenge, so then we're not concerned. So again, we had a kasha. Rabbi Yudah in Saita is concerned. Don't be Megala delay, but concerned by Tehara, by Skila. We undress the Isha like the Ish. Answer is, because there she's getting killed. There's no longer a concern of Yitzhahara. Here, she might be around if she turns out to be Tahira. Amar I don't understand. Rabbi Yudha, the Rabbi Yudha We seem to be concerned about a stero within Rabbi Yudha. Rabbi Yudha here, Rabbi Yudha by Skila. That was the Kash. The Rabbanon, the Rabbanon like Kash. What happened with the stero between the two? Shita is Chachamim. What happened to that contradiction? In Saita, the Chachamim don't seem to be concerned about revealing her guf. And by Skila, they say Isha is covered during the Skila procedure. What happened to that? What happened to that stira? Elam Rav says, Rav, I'll answer both things. The Rabbida, the Rabbida, the stira regarding Rabbida, like Kasha, can be answered to the Shanina as we explained. The Rabbanon, the Rabbanon, not the Kasha, regarding the stira within the Rabbanon, that too can be explained as follows. There's a difference between the both between both halachas. Halacha time and The reason why the Chachamim tell us that a Saita should be shamed in this manner, Mishum v'nivasro kol We want all women to take heed, to take lesson, not to allow themselves to this type of situation to bring suspicion upon themselves, to maintain their etznius. There's a purpose in doing this. What greater lesson than just the fact that she's getting killed? You don't need more than that. And therefore, there's no need to uh, remove the Ibgadim. Uh, the perhaps will say, apply both elements the uh, actual uh, punishment of killing and the shame and embarrassment that will come along with that by removing the Ibgadim. Omar of Nachman, Omar Rabbi Bravo, no. True, she's high of Misa, but we can still have compassion. Omar Kro, the after the Racha Kamecha, that applies even in this case. Berer loy Misa Yafa. Choose the best possible way of applying the Misa. Don't apply any undue emotional pain if it's not necessary for the mitzvah. So, bottom line is, we answered the Kasha. By Saita, we want everybody to take Musa. So we shame and embarrass her. We a Megalar part of her body as well, to be Mevayesher. But when it comes to Skila, you're killing her. That's the, that's the biggest Musa to anybody around. Why don't we add the Busha of removing the B'gadim? We have to Rachakam It's not necessary. Asks the Gemara, okay, so Lema, the Rav Nachman Tanoi, perhaps this Chiddush of Rav Nachman, that we minimize the hardship by the skila is actually subject to Machlekes Tanoim because the Chachamim are concerned about her uh, busha, whereas Rabida says uh, even Aisha is in the scale as Aruma without Begadim. Apparently he's not concerned about this issue of Brerla Misa Yafa. We pile it up. Physical pain, emotional pain, it's all part of the Einish. Says the Gemara, no. Look, you don't have to say that. Tukuli Amma Islu the Rav Nachman. Perhaps everybody, even Rabbi Yudah, would agree to Rav Nachman in principle. But here, in the case of Skila, removal of, of garments, 
hastens the process, although it adds more emotional hardship, but it, it quickens the, the Misa, and it makes the Misa experience shorter. So physically, it's easier to bear, although you're adding emotional discomfort as well. So the question is, which way you go? It's a delicate balance. So everybody is, agree, is, is in agreement. The Kuli Alma is what the Rav meant to make it as speedy and uh, painless as possible. Machlekes here is as follows. Mar Savar Bezyoyne Odefle Tvei The Chacham hold that a person's emotional considerations Bezyoyne of of, of, of you know, busha and, and prestige is, is is higher, stronger, is more important. It's more painful to be embarrassed. That factor stands higher, otherfully tfei mitzara dugufei, than physical pain. Meaning, the skila in a dressed state minimizes the emotional, but prolongs the actual physical tsar. A person would rather undergo physical tsar if it spares him of emotional discomfort. Unbelievable. So that's the Chachamim. Do it dressed, even though it takes a bit longer. But at least you're sparing her of the emotional. Pusha. Umar sabar tsara dugufei odiflei tfemi bidzene. Whereas the Rabbuda holds, it's the opposite. Tsara guf. Physical pain stands higher than bizarre than shame, therefore better. Um, do it uh, undressed, therefore it will hasten the process, it would quicken the Misa, despite the fact that it has uh, extra bizarre. The uh, physical factor stands higher than the emotional factor. Okay, so in summation, we had a double stira, uh, Rabuda, Rabuda, Rabban, and Ander Rabban. Here in Masech Soita, Rabbi Yudha tells us, don't uh, expose the Isha unnecessarily. We don't want to create a uh, pitfall and uh, Yetzirah, whereas by Skila, he holds that uh, the Isha is um, going to be undressed before the Skila. We're not concerned about the Hirur, and the answer is big difference. Over here, the Isha might get through this process uh, safely. She might walk away alive and well, in which case she'll present a pitfall to those who had witnessed her uh, during that process. There's a concern about Hirur Yetzahar, whereas by Skila, she's no longer around. Regarding the Chachamim, over here by Saita, they say, uh, expose the guf, whereas by uh, Skila, they say the Isha is uh, put to death with the Begadim. And the answer to that was, uh, the point by Saita is to expose her to the Shevler, to make it look ugly, and bring her shame and embarrassment so that others will take lesson and maintain their tznius, whereas by Eskila, it's unnecessary. It's just the fact that you're putting her to death, that's the biggest musar, the biggest lesson to all. And we actually try to spare her any unnecessary additional anguish and discomfort, and therefore we do the skila in a dressed manner. Rabbi Yudah holds just the opposite, you know. Uh, you want to hasten the death because Tsar HaGuf is a greater factor than Tsar HaNefesh, and therefore, just the opposite. Remove the clothing so that the uh, skila is hastened and is more efficient. Okay, the Mishnah continues. Haisam Mechusav Levanim, if she was dressed in white, we switch it to black. Tana, we learned in Raisa. However, Im Hoyu Shcherem Noim La, if black looked good on this Isha, so actually it adorns her. Mechas Noisav Begadim Mechoram, we dress her with ugly looking clothing. She had jewelry, we remove that. Pshita, of course, hashta nevuli manvalov, we make a look at disheveled and ugly. Hanimi is there any need to discuss? Certainly we remove the jewelry. Why even mention it? Maldatema, perhaps, I would think just the opposite. Bahani, by wearing jewelry in this, uh, you know, while she is in this disheveled, exposed manner, Isla B'zoyin actually adds shame and embarrassment. The Amrinji, as people say, Shliach, he's been undressed, Artel standing without clothing, Vesayim Masane wearing shoes. It's 
it's a comical scene, and therefore, perhaps we leave the uh, jewelry on her, which will make it even look more ludicrous. Kamashmon, the answer is no. We don't take chances. We want to remove any uh, element of beauty. After which they bring this rope, um, which is sort of uh, strapped around the begotten to keep them from falling. Boy, Rabbi Abba. He asked the question, This Chevel, how important is it? Is it going to hold up the process? Do we wait for the Chevel Amitri? Is the whole point is to keep the Godim up? And therefore, if you don't have the Chevel Amitri, just bring anything. So even just a strap would work. Or perhaps there's a special reason to insist on the Chevel Amitri. As we learn later on, he It's all measure for measure. She strapped herself with this nice belt to present herself to this um, other person to attract him. That's why the Koyan brings this very chevel, this ugly looking rope, and um, ties it to the begadim above the chest area. It's mida connected mida. For what she did, so therefore it's ma'akev. It, uh, it's important to do this. So what is it? Is it just a, a means to keep the gadam up? Any strap will do, or is it a specific thing? Amalei tani source he responded. We have the Mishnah, which says v'achakach maybe chevel amitri v'kaisru lo lemal me'adel. Mishnah says you bring the chevel and you tie the gadam up k'dei shelo yishma to gadam amalei to keep the gadam from falling down. So apparently, although it's important to have the chevel amitri, perhaps there's this factor. Yeah, midah connected mida, very important, but it's not critical. We don't hold up the process as long as you can find anything to do the job. The Mishnah continues, V'chala roitze. We'll raise bodyur. Anybody wants to watch can come watch. Hogu v'kashir. The wording of the Mishnah seems to be inherently difficult to understand. Amr's first you begin, V'chala roitze, we'll raise bodyur. Anybody wants to watch, come and watch. Amr, we'll no gavri, we'll no noshi. Apparently there's no difference between men, women, anybody can... Come watch. Vatatani, then it says, no, only women come to watch. Kol anoshim, mutaris l'roisa, which sounds like noshim in, only women. Anoshim loy, but not men. So which way is it? Amr abaye tirgim anoshim. You're right, only women come to watch. When the Mishnah began, kol anoshim, l'roisa, with anybody, it means anybody from the women's folk. Amr le'i rava, says rava, no. Vah kol anoshim, l'roisa, baraya katani. Mishnah clearly says anybody wants to come watch, does so, men or women. Elam Rav Rav says like this: Kolaroitz Eluroitz Ba Roy. Anybody wishes to witness the scene, go ahead. Loish no gavri, loish no noshi. Irrelevant if it's a man or a woman. So men and women are allowed onto the scene, but v'noshim chayavas Eluroitz. It's more important that women should come see. They actually have to come watch. Shana Rabbeinu Vosru Kol Anoshim. Olisa Senu Kibizimah Ses Sechno. There's a reason, a specific reason, for women to come, so that they take heed, they take lesson. And act bits news. The Mishnah continues. The midash other moided ba moided than light. The same way a person conducts himself, Hashem responds to him in kind. This is one of the midays of Hashem. On the bad side, on the good side, Hashem does midah kedeket midah. Listen to this. There's a marsha in Maseches Megillah that flamed Aleph on Rebbeis who says that. Especially when it comes to Einish. Hashem does it as a chesed. Look, a person, loyal you know, runs into a hard time. It's a chesed from Hashem that if a person pays, pays close attention, he can see, very often he can see, it corresponds to his behavior. And this uh, makes it easier for him to decipher what's going on and to pinpoint the source of that, of that hardship and allows him to do tshuva. And do away with that oynish. So midah connected midah is a wonderful chesed of Hashem to uh, make things clear for us. We find this especially by the Yisaita. We treat her in a way of midah connected midah. He kished us atzmal avera. She adorned herself to attract avera. Hamokim nivla. Pasuk says, do just the opposite. Take her. And make her look disheveled and shabby. He gilsas atzmal avera. She exposed herself for avera. Hamakim gilo aleo. The Torah exposed her. Biyorech eschila avera tchila. She began with the thigh area. 
that's the way she did that that's why when the Einish hits her it's first the lower part of the body and then it moves up to the Betan or Shara Gufle Pulit of course the whole body is swept along with it so nothing was spared but in terms of the uh, you know the process it's clear that it was uh, corresponding to the Averis everybody sees and understands and takes less here comes an interesting point Omar of Yasef Afal Gav De Bimido even though the actual you know four methods of Misa applied by the Besden the Taylor that's no longer active we don't have that today but Bimida the idea of Mida connected Mida that Hashem will apply a similar process to a person who's deserving of Misa, a process which uh, resembles, which is similar to that specific Misa that that person is deserving, that still applies today. But Mida loy bottle, that's not bottle. Domin Rabbi Yisrael has a race of Torahs elsewhere. Even after the Churban, Pisha Bottle Sanhedrin, even though we no longer have the Sanhedrin who applies capital punishment, Arba Misa loy bottle, but the four Misa procedures are still active. What do you mean? Va bottle, they're no longer here. Ella, what he meant is like this. Din Arba Mises le bottle. The concept of Arba Mises were not cancelled. Which means, Mishan is high of skill. If a person is deserving of skill, which involves throwing him off the building, etc., so a similar mishap, chas v'shon, will occur to him. Oy no ifil menagag, he can fall off the Roof, or an animal will just attack him and knock him down. Likewise, by Shreifa, Mishan is Chayv Shreifa, deserving of burning. Or if but they all end up in a fire, or Nechash and Kisha will be bitten by a snake, whose fiery, burning venom will attack him. Mishan is Chayv Hariga, person who is deserving of beheading. Or Nim Salamachos, either will be given over to the authorities who treat him as such, or Liston Boy and Olaf will be attacked by robbers who behead him. Mishan is Chayv Chanika, choking, or Tevei Benar, end up drowning in a nar. In a river, or Mesh Vesurchi will be. Afflicted by the Srunchi neck uh, related illness. Tanya, Hoy Rabbi Aymer, Minayin Shabbat Midash Adam Moidit, Ba Moidin Lai. Where do we find this idea of Midah Kenegad Midah? That a person gets corresponding to his actions. Shanamar Bissa'asa, Ashana Bissa'a, a large container, Bishilcha to Rivena. Rashi says, You throw away the container, that same container. Meaning you throw away an opportunity, do something wrong, that same energy, that same behavior will come, come around, come back to haunt him. Perhaps this only applies to a large container, a large aver, a large misdeed. What about minor averis? What about a half a sa'a, just a muscle. A half a sa'a is three kav, trave a kav, two and one. So three, three kav, that's a half measure. Or even a smaller measure, a chatsi tarkav, half of that. Even just a kav, a chatsi kav, roiva, a quarter, a chatsi roiva, half a quarter, two mon. Ve'uchli, really small measures, basically, even a minor misdeed. Does that elicit the midah connected midah? Yes, minayin, how do we know that? Tamalayim ki kol so'in so'in barash. So, uh, sa'in is a, like a small saw, even a small measure, also elicits that response. Umanayin shokol pruto pruto. Now, let's say a person doesn't have and he sees no retribution. It's coming. Hashem keeps cheshben. Hashem keeps record. Umanayin shokol pruto pruto. Even a penny at a time. Mr. Refus lechashben gadol will actually add up to a large, a large number. Meaning Hashem sometimes is, is patient with a person. And even if he doesn't get retributed right away, doesn't get the onish right away, it doesn't mean it's been deleted. It all adds up. Tamalaymar, achas, lachas, one and one. Limse cheshbon will culminate in a cheshbon and we will be reckoned for. So we have this idea of Midah Kenegad Midah, which is highlighted in the Parsha of Soita. We'll just start a little bit and continue tomorrow. Vichem Matsina of Soita, likewise, we find by the Soita. Shabbat Midah Shemadada. In the same fashion that she conducted herself, Ba Mother the same way we respond to her. For instance, he Amdal Pesach Beis. She stood by the 
the way of a home to attract other people. Leroy is to expose herself to this person. What happens then? She's placed in public at the Shar Niknor. Umarek Loinol Lekoyl Lekoyim puts her there, and now she's exposed and shamed before all passerby. What else? He partially Sudar Non Al Roisha. He spread this nice scarf on her head. Lefiha Koyin Oitel Keep Him Al Roisha. Koyin takes that cap. Umar Nichoy Tachas Rogel places it beneath her feet to trample upon, to embarrass her. We'll continue by the Shem tomorrow. So here we have the Midah Kegel Midah on a negative uh, note, and of course it applies on a po- positive note as well. We're going to see the upcoming Sugi. So bottom line is, we have a site that was brought up to uh, Beis Hamikdash, up and down, up and down, to make her, uh, you know, weary and, and shake her up, hope, hoping that she will admit if in fact she's guilty, which would preempt the whole process and spare us the uh, racing of Hashem's name. We never uh, put two sites together as one, we have the Pasuk, uh, which says Isa. We have the added Pshat of Reb Shimon because of that uh, you know, confidence that she might be feeding off her friend. But that wouldn't apply when we see that she's quivering. And again, this heta would only be allowed if there were two Kayanim taking care of it. Otherwise, it looks like you're just trying to unload and get it over with. Paras Rosh Isha tells us we uncover the hair, we disrupt the hair, we uncover part of the goof. Uh, we have a steer between Reb Yuda over here, Reb Yuda over there, two Rabbanans. We explained that as well. Overall, we try to dishevel her, uh, make her look shabby, uh, and uh, we insist that the Nashim come and watch so that they have the Musar and maintain their Tznias. And we concluded with the idea of Midah, uh, Keneged Midah. All the best to you and much, much Hasalacha.